Hello and welcome to my channel Recon Academy. In this tutorial, I will show you how to import, how to estimate and interpret ARDL models uh, using Strata. So do like the video and subscribe to my channel. Coming to you is coming to Strata. I have already imported some of the data in Strata, and now I will instruct Strata that the data which I have imported is a time series data. For this, we have a command ts set and the name of the variable of uh, the time period which is year so now the strata took this data as a time series data now we will run an ARDL model with some lags which may or may not be optimal uh, so the for running ARDL model we have a command which is ARDL we will write this in the command section ARDL and then the name of the dependent variable which in this case is GDP n and then name of the independent variables which is consumption co sorry co and i investment and then we will press enter so these are the result of the um, ARDL model we have instructed strata that we are running an ARDL model and till now the lags uh, uh, may or may not be optim uh, optimal. Now we will find uh, an optimal uh, optimal lags. For first, we will find optimal lag for the dependent variable, and then the independent variable one by one. So, and then we will run ARDL model again, and then we will interpret it. So, for finding uh, optimal lag, we have a command which is our SOC V A R S O C. We will write the, uh, this in the command section V A R S O C and then the name of the dependent variable which is DDP N and we will press enter. Now you can see that uh, straight around some uh, uh, straight around this command and give us some results and these are the result for zero lag one two three and four lags and uh, the star indicating the optimal lag of that uh, criteria we have uh, six to seven criteria in this case the the most famous are the this AIC which is Akai Info criteria this HQIC which is Hennen Quinn criteria, criteria and this is Schwartz criteria so we will select we can select anyone between these three but we will mention that we have selected this specific criteria for um, finding our optimal lag in our thesis and we will se uh, select the same criteria for all the variables so now I, oh, I want to select AIC criteria and and according to AIC criteria the steric is on the fourth lag uh, so which means that according to AIC criteria the um, optimal lag for the dependent uh, variable the optimal lag for the GDP is uh, four lags now we will run the same command for consumption and then for investment uh, for consumption VAR SOC CO is the consumption we'll press enter and the same uh, we will select the same criteria which is AIC ACAC info criteria and according to ACAC info criteria uh, we can see that the steric is on the fourth lag so the fourth lag is the optimal lag in this case as well of the for the consumption and now we will check the optimal lag for the investment we will run uh, through VSAC command um, again for investment VARSOC and then we we'll press um, we'll enter the name of the investment which in this case is I and press enter and according to ACAC info criteria now the steric is on the uh, steric is on the the second lag so we, the, according to ACAC info criteria the optimal lag for the investment is the second lag 
so now we know our optimal lags for the dependent variable you can see that for the dependent variable according to Akai info criteria the uh, fourth lag is the optimal lag and for the consumption the f same fourth lag is well for the optimal is optimal lag for consumption and for the investment the optimal lag is the second lag now we will run uh, our model again with the with these optimal lags and we will interpret the results for running this model again with optimal lags we will uh, again uh, give the same command ARDL and then we will uh, write the name of the dependent variable which is GDP N in this case and then the name of the independent variable which is consumption and investment and then we will put a comma and we will specify lags now which is we will uh, write lags and in the parentheses first we will um, uh, write the lag optimal lag of the dependent variable which was 4 and for the consumption which is, was also 4 and for the investment which is 2 and we will uh, close the brackets and we will press enter now you can see that this was our command and this was the optimal lags which we have given so according to our optimal lags the um, fourth with four is the optimal lag for dependent and four is optimal lag for the consumption and four is optimal lag for the uh, two is sorry two is the optimal lag for the investment and these are the results so first of all we will interpret some of the results and the number of the observation is the number of observation under the um, consideration which we have run and the number of observation is in this case is 52 54 and the probability of f stats shows the significance of the model so if the if this probability of f statistics is below 0 0.05 or below 5% then the model will be significant as a whole otherwise uh, if the uh, probability is 5 or above 5 then the model will be insignificant so in this case the model is significant because the probability value is 0 or 0% uh, which is below 5% and now what is R square and adjusted R square so the R square and adjusted R square shows how much the variation in the dependent variables are uh, in the dependent variable are explained by these independent variables so in this case the variation the 99 percent variation in the dependent variable is explained by these independent variables same is the case of uh, adjusted r square and and these are uh, this is the dependent variable GDPN and these are all the independent variables and we will we will interpret the probability of T stats and T stats and coefficient uh, so what does these uh, all means first of all what does this probability mean uh, if the this probability if this row of probability in this case if these probability are below 0 0.05 or below 5% then uh, we will say that this specific uh, variable is significant otherwise if the probability of a variable is 5% or above 5% then we will say that uh, this this model is uh, this uh, variable is insignificant so in this case we can see that uh, only the fourth lag of the dependent variable is insignificant and in the consumption the second lag and the fourth lag is insignificant and um, the constant term is also insignificant while all other variables which is the first second and third lag of the dependent variable the uh, consumption uh, the level of consumption and um, uh, first lag and the third lag is significant 
and the uh, investment and uh, first and second both legs are significant um, so this can also be checked from the from the t stats so if the t stats of a variable is 2 or above 2 in absolute form then we will say that this specific variable is significant otherwise if the t stats is below 2 uh, or uh, below 2 in absolute form then we will say that this specific variable is insignificant so in this case you can see that the same result the fourth leg of the dependent variable is ins insignificant and the second and the fourth leg of the consumption is insignificant and the um, uh, constant term is insignificant while all other variables are significant so what does this co uh, coefficient means sorry uh, these this coefficient and this coefficient and these coefficients uh, so what does this uh, the value of this coefficient means so uh, if uh, let's suppose the value of co uh, coefficient uh, the coefficient value of the consumption is 2 you can see that uh, a, a coefficient value of consumption is 2.1 so we will say that if the uh, consumption increased by 1% then the GDP will be increased by 2.1% in the short run or we can say that if the consumption increased by 1 then the GDP will be increased by uh, uh, the GDP will be increased by 2.1 in the short run keeping other all things uh, same uh, we will mention short run as well because these are all the result of short runs and we will uh, check its uh, long run as well uh, later in the video and this is how we interpret the con uh, consumption and you can see that some of the variables have a negative sign with the consumption uh, with the sorry with the coefficient so how we will interpret this uh, type of negative sign in this case we will say that uh, you, you can see that the first leg of the dependent uh, the first leg of the consumption ha having a negative sign and it is also significant so we, will, we can interpret it and so we, we will interpret it like this that if the uh, the coefficient is minus 1.94 so we will say that if, uh, if the uh, if the first lag of the consumption is increased by uh, 1% then the GDP will be decreased by minus 1.94% so we will say that uh, it have a negative it has a negative impact on the dependent variable while if there is no sign then we will say that it has a positive sign uh, it have a positive impact on the dependent variable so this is how we will interpret it but we uh, uh, if we interpret ARDL model you must specify that these are results of short run not long run so this is how we will interpret an ARDL model now we will check a uh, bounce test uh, to check whether this uh, independent variable have a long run relationship on with the dependent variable or not so for a bounce test we will first instructs data that we also want to check the long run relationship so for this we will uh, we will uh, we will run the same command again uh, of ARDL model with additional EC command uh, which uh, which denotes the error collection model uh, which is used for long run relationship so the same command that is ARDL and the dependent variable which is GDP n and the independent variable which is consumption and investment and comma and uh, the same lags which was optimal which was 4 and 4 and 2 and bracket close this was the previous command which we uh, have uh, had run uh, for checking the short run results now we instruct data that we also want to check the error correction model for the wrong run uh, so we'll write EC next to the lag specified and we will uh, press enter so these are the result of the 
uh, error correction model as well now uh, now we will check uh, whether these uh, long, uh, these dependent variable these independent variable have a long relationship with the dependent variable or not for this we will uh, now run and uh, a bounds test uh, for the command for the bounds test is um, estat which is a state estat and then b test so the command for running bounds test after uh, running an ARDL model with the error correction specification is ESTAT and B test. So now we will press enter. So now you can see that uh, this was the command and this is the uh, these are the results. So for this we have to check uh, we can check through F stats and through T stats. So you can see that there is no value of F stats. Uh, there might be some problem um, in my data, but uh, we can check it through T stats as well. So if you have an F stats value, I don't have, but if you have an F stat value, then you will check it with this, uh, with these two lags. These are the 5% uh, level of significance. This is the 10% level of significance. Sorry, this is 10% level of significance. This is 5% level of significance. This is uh, 0 0.25. Uh, uh, this is a 2.5 percent level of significance and this is 1 percent level of significance so we mostly check with the uh, 5 percent level of significance so uh, uh, if you have an F stat value then we will check whether if this um, this is called the upper bound and this is called the lower bound so we will check if the this F stat value is above than this the upper bound level then uh, there will be a long run relationship with the uh, with the dependent variable of this independent variable but if this f stat value is below this um, is below this lower bound then we will say that there is no long run relationship between these two variables so uh, we will stick to the short run relationships but in this case i don't have an f stat value so we can check it with the t stat value as well so uh, these were the result this is the table for checking an uh, f stats you can see that from here and this is the this is the table through which we can check through uh, t statistics uh, you can check it from here so this is the lower uh, this is the 10% uh, level of significance this is 5% level of significance this is 2.5% level of significance and this is 1% level of significance this is the upper bound this is the lower bound and this is the i naught is the lower bound and i1 is the upper bound the same is the case with all the uh, level of significance i naught is the lower bound and i1 is the upper bound and one more uh, case I have uh, forgotten here if the F stat value is between this the upper bound and the, the lower bound and the upper bound if the F stat value is between the uh, uh, lower bound and the upper bound then the we can we will say that the result is inconclusive we cannot say whether this um, uh, specific model um, have a long run relationship or not so in this case we don't have a value of f stats so we will check um, the bounce bounce test through t stats so this is the same and the upper lower bound and the upper bound and the lower bound and the upper bound and the same goes on the i naught is the lower bound and i1 is the upper bound and l uh, l underscore 1 is the 
10% level of significance, this is 5% level of significance, this is 2.5% level of significance and this is 1% level of significance. We mostly check the significance level of with the 5% level of significance. So if this T stats uh, value is above this uh, up lower bound, if the T stats value is above lower bound, we will say that um, the there is no longer a relationship and uh, exists. There is no longer a relationship between the uh, uh, the dependent variable and the independent variable, and there is no need up for the error correction model. We will run only a RDL model. However, if this T stats is below the um, uh, the upper bound, then we will say that. Uh, if this T stats is up, uh, is below the upper bound, then we will say that there is longer relationship between the uh, dependent variable and the independent variable, and we have to run error correction model with the ARDL model as well. And if this T stats comes between the uh, between the lower bound and the upper bound then we will say that uh, the result of this bound test is inconclusive we cannot say whether this specific model uh, uh, whether these specific variables have long relationship uh, or not so in this case the t stats value is minus 2.05 which is above then minus uh, 2.86 uh, so which means that the T stats value is above than the uh, the lower bound so we will say that we will accept H naught which is no longer in relationship so in this case we don't have a long run relationship so there is no need to run an ARD uh, sorry there is no need to run an error correction model we have only we only have to run an ARDL model and interpret the results of the short run but as not in this case but if we have um, lower value than the upper bound um, and if uh, we have a long run relationship which not which is not in this case then we have to run an ARDL model with the error correction model as well so uh, in this video I will only show you how to run that and how to interpret that but uh, according to my results there is no long run relationship but only just for your understanding I have uh, I will run it so for running uh, an ARDL model with the error correction model we will um, run ARDL uh, the same GDP N and the same consumption the same investment and uh, comma and the same lag specified uh, which were 4 4 and 2 and bracket close and we will write EC in the end of that and press enter so this is the command we have run these are the optimal lags this is the number of observation the R square and adjusted R square the R square and adjusted R square shows that the 99% variation has been shown uh, in the 99% variation the dependent variable have been shown by these independent variables and uh, we will check the significance through the probability and through T stats we can check any one between these two and uh, we will also we will also um, interpret coefficients so I, as I have already already shown you how to interpret the short run results these are the short run results uh, it has the same same interpretation which we have uh, done earlier in our video now we will uh, we will uh, interpret the long run results which is of converse, uh, consumption and investment 
so according to this result the uh, both the variable are significant the uh, probability value of consumption is 0% or 0 uh, or 0 which is below 5% or below 5 below uh, which is below 5% or below 0 0.05 which means that this variable is significant and t stats of this variable is um, also very high we can also say that this variable is significant at 1% level of significance and t stats is uh, 8.23 8.39 uh, so if the t stats is above uh, 2 in absolute form then we will say that this uh, variable is significant otherwise if the t stats is below 2 then we will say that this specific variable is insignificant so in this case the uh, uh, t stats is uh, about 2 which is 8.39 so we will say that this variable is significant and uh, we will check the significance of the investment as well so the probability value of investment is uh, 0 or 0% 0 which means that um, which is below 0 0.05 or below 5% which means that this variable is significant at 1% level of significance because uh, this value this probability value is below 0 0.01 or 1% as well so the t stats of uh, investment is also higher than 2 so if the t stats is 2 or about 2 in absolute form then we will say that this specific more uh, the specific variable is significant otherwise if the t stats value is below 2 then we will in absolute form then we will say that this uh, specific variable is insignificant so in this case the investment is significant at 4 um, significant because the t stats value is about 2 in absolute form and this is the result of uh, this is the coefficient of consumption and this is the coefficient of investment so according to coefficient of consumption we will say that if the consumption increased by 1% then the GDP will be increased by 1.67% or in another case if uh, if our variable is not in percentage form then we will say that if the consumption increased by 1 then the GDP will be increased by 1.67 however uh, in the case of investment is uh, coefficient of investment is 0 0.8 uh, which means that if the if we increase investment by 1% then the GDP will be increased by 0.8 percent uh, however if the variable is not in the percentage form then we will interpret it like uh, if the investment is increased by 1 then the GDP will be increased by 0.8 so this is how we will inter estimate and interpret an ARDL model and the error correction term of uh, error correction model of uh, long run uh, relationship through which we can uh, check the long run relationship and bounds test so these are all uh, information about the ARDL model so this is from today tutorial you can watch my other tutorials from my channel and you can also have uh, assess it through the playlist which I have made so do like the video and subscribe to my channel bye for now